Hey, Tim DeStasso here. It is Psychrometric Saturday once again. Thanks for joining us. And we've been talking about wet bulb temperature and how wet bulb temperature is a combination of dry bulb temperature and the moisture in the air that a lot of times we use dew point to measure. Wet bulb temperature is this diagonal purple line. And so let's say that we're going to plot a point on the psychrometric chart. We're going to get our dry bulb temperature. Let's say we also know our wet bulb temperature. We're going to look for that intersection between the dry bulb line that goes up and down and the the wet bulb line that goes diagonal and that's where we're going to plot our point. Again, if we know any two points on the psychrometric chart, we can plot our operating point and then from there we can extrapolate what the other conditions are. Now we've also talked about how wet bulb temperature is an indicator of how much total heat is in the air. It also accounts for the heat that's in the humidity in the air. And that's why last week we determined that even though Phoenix, Arizona has a much higher dry bulb outdoor design temperature, but Charlotte has a higher wet bulb temperature, Charlotte actually has more heat in the air. This time we're going to talk about how charging a fixed orifice metering device really is dependent on our wet bulb temperature and so we really need to know what that is. So you're going to want to have a psychrometer, something that reads the temperature and the humidity so that you can know what your dry bulb and your wet bulb temperature is. Now I'm going to put a charging chart that's commonly used up on the screen. As you can see the target superheat for a fixed orifice metering device is all over the place and it really depends on two things, outdoor temperature and indoor wet bulb temperature. So it's really important to take your wet bulb temperature. If you're trying to use this chart and you don't have your wet bulb temperature, this chart is absolutely meaningless to you. All right, next, let's talk about what we need to do when we're charging the system and how we use our wet bulb temperature. We've got the same exact unit here in this example and very similar conditions. We come and we check the system in April and the indoor dry bulb temperature is 75 degrees, the outdoor temperature is 80 degrees, and it's only 62 degree wet bulb temperature inside. And then we come back in August and the exact same conditions are there except for it's now 66 degrees wet bulb inside. We've got more humidity in the air, so we've got more heat in the air. So what would be our target superheat? Well, let's first plot these two points just so you can see the difference in them. In April, we've got a 75 degree uh, dry bulb and a 62 degree wet bulb. So we're gonna take our red dot, we're gonna go over here to 75, and then we're gonna go to 62, where the 75 degree Imaginary line meets the 62 degree imaginary diagonal line. That's really what our point is here in April. Now in August, it's 75 degrees in 66 wet bulbs. So again, 75 degrees coming across here, we go up and we're gonna intersect with a 66 degree wet bulb line somewhere around here. So we're talking about two different points on the psychrometric chart. They're not too far away, but they do represent two different conditions in the air. Now let's take a look at that charging chart again. In both cases, it's 80 degrees, but when we only have 62 degree wet bulb, our target superheat is only eight degrees. Now what happens when we come back in August and there's a little more heat in the air because of the extra humidity? That same exact unit with everything else the same now has a target superheat of 15 degrees. And so that really changes how you're going to charge a unit. If you get this wrong, you could undercharge or overcharge a system. And that's why it's important to check wet bulb temperature when you're charging a system. Now with TXV and other adjustable metering devices, yes, those metering devices will adjust to maintain that target superheat, but if that metering device is seeing more heat in the air, i.e. higher wet bulb temperature, it's going to open up further in order to maintain that target superheat, which means that your operating pressures, your saturation temperatures are going to be higher, and then your subcooling might actually be lower because you're using up some of that liquid in the condenser in the evaporator because it needs it. So knowing what your wet bulb temperature, even when you're charging with a TXV is super important. Now, if that seems like a lot to retain, that's okay. If you use measure quick as it's intended, it'll take all this information and it will tell you what your target superheat is and you can charge to that. That's all for this time. Thanks for checking in on us on Psychrometric Saturday.